All right, guys, happy new year. It's uh, great to start the new year off kicking it at a new place for me and my girlfriend, living above a shop on a 22 acre property. So that's gonna be awesome for the whole mower scene this year and for the crew and for test driving and exploring and whatnot. So we're excited for that. But uh, look at that, we didn't get that at the old place. Wrap it up, people. Unreal, I'm loving that. At the old place, we were in the city now we're on the mountains doing our own thing. This new year is gonna be awesome. And over the whole course of last year, I got a ton of questions from you guys, which is awesome. And I got a lot of the same question asking, what mower do I wanna start with? And what parts do I wanna start with? And just how do I start an off-road mower build? And I always told them to start by checking out the YouTube channel. You're already here checking out this video, so scroll down, check out how we built the mowers and stuff, because that is a ton of info and detailed uh, mods and how we did them right on the channel showing exactly this mower and the other mowers that we've built. But today I figured we'd start the new year off and get you guys starting the new year off with some of that knowledge. So I figured I'd go over a few of the, the detailed uh, parts that make Musty Musty. And Musty took three years to get here and believe me it's nowhere close to where I want it to be or where it needs to be but it works great and I'm super happy but it's taken a lot of trial and error to get here. Key aspects to making Musty uh, off-road mower is one being a manual transaxle which means you have to physically shift the gears with a clutch pedal and a gear shift stick. Mine happens to be a four-speed. This model of tractor, this is a 1981 Sears GT16 and this came with a 16 horse post twin and a Peerless 1200 series which happens to be the little brother to the transaxle I have in here now which is a Peerless 2300. It's a four-speed transaxle with some different gear ratios because after the years of running Musty with the 1200, I realized I wanted a different gearing reduction and another gear to get my top speed a lot higher and my low end a lot more torquier. Torquier. A lot more torquier, which happened to work great by putting the Peerless 2300 in. So that is a great aspect to your guys' look for an off-road mower. It may not be what model is perfect because there's a ton of models that have manual transaxles. And to get into the transaxles themselves, looking at one inch axle transaxles, which means the transaxle axle shafts are one inch in diameter. They're beefy, they're way more durable than the three quarter inch transaxles, which come in a lot of the mowers that you may like the body on and whatnot, which is great. Use that body and frame, reinforce it how you need it to be reinforced because you're gonna need it to make it nice and sturdy. And just beating on it like that just tends to bend things and break things and on a light duty mower like a lawnmower compared to a lawn tractor with Musty's a GT, a garden tractor compared to a lawn tractor which is more for your lawn which compared to the GT models which just happen to be a lot more beefier, bigger engines, heavy duty transaxles, better steering systems and just a better uh, rig to start with to make a capo off-road rig. Now some of the things that Musty did have which was also great was the engine in it and I ran that motor basically until I wanted something different and or bigger which I did go bigger. Now you don't need to go bigger but it definitely does help. Now I went to a 19 and a half horsepower opposed twin because they've just been working great for us and in the area I live these are the motors that tend to be in the lawn tractors so that's what we're using that's what we can do and they work great tons of power tons of torque it's not your v-twin power or torque but it's great for what we do and we're moving ourselves into v-twins as they come more readily available I can say. Now the steering system on Musty sucked horribly and I tried making it work through tons of uh, mods and trial and error and you guys can see that all on the YouTube channel because I did it for you guys and you saw how it worked. What I've done is if you have and you're gonna have to watch the YouTube videos is I added a gear mechanism in there where the original one was and then a uh, extended sleeve down to a arm that pivots on the bottom of the mower and then to a full tie rod setup. And you can check that all out on the YouTube videos because I'm not gonna get into the detail right now because again I've already have and I showed you exactly how it was built on those uh, videos. I built the whole custom front axle on here as well and the knuckles and the spindles and everything because I was tired of stock uh, three-quarter inch little spindles. They are bending and breaking even when we reinforced them. So I just got rid of that and I just built it new because I like building things and I like seeing what I can do. Uh, we put the winch bumper on here and you can see I got a winch tucked in here. There's a 2,500 pound winch in there. That works great for rescuing the boys or rescuing Musty myself. One of the biggest things that we installed on here that works the best, one of the most important things to have on a rock crawling off-road mower is a hydro handbrake. All right, so a hydraulic handbrake means I'm using hydraulic fluid to compress the fluid down a tube 
or a line down to a caliper which has two brake pads on it that pinch a brake disc. And this system works phenomenal. And when I mean that, I really do mean that. We've had other systems, strap brakes, just pressure brakes, the stock brakes, and they just do not work like the hydraulic hand brakes do. It is so nice to be able to slowly apply the pressure to your brakes and easily slowly crawl down a rock and just slowly creep down off of it. Or when you're hauling down a road and you really need to lock up your brakes, these things lock up like no, no tomorrow. And let me say some of the most easy install you can do and they have not failed or had any issues since I installed it. One of the best mods I've done for sure and something you guys need to do on your off-road mower. Okay, so let's get into a couple other things that definitely make an off-road mower a mower. So tires and rims. Now, if you're getting a garden tractor, it is most likely going to come with 12-inch rear rims that have a 5-bolt, a 3-bolt, a 4-bolt, 1-bolt, 2-bolt, however many bolt, the most common is the 5 and the 3-bolt bolt pattern on the rear. And then with the garden tractors as well, they're going to come with an 8-inch front rim. Now, the great part about this is ATVs have typically 8-inch rims on the front as well and sometimes on the rear. So you can go ahead and use ATV front tires as your front tires and it works out great. So musties happen to be 20 inch, but we like commonly to use 19 inch on an eight inch rim by seven inch width and that works out great. Now for the rear, we like to use 25 inch tires from an ATV and then on musty here, I use a 12 inch by four inch wide trailer rim, as I was saying, that has a Jeep bolt pattern and that these these tires are the Neato Tractions and we got them from Revco.ca just because that's a good company to use in Canada. So that's where we got them from, not sponsored yet. So those are some of the greatest things to have on the mower is the tires and that will definitely get you from where point A to point B is for sure. Now, along with the rear end setup here and the transaxles, you're gonna wanna go ahead and lock the transaxle, which means either welding it or um, on this transaxle in particular, because it was a LSD, so a limited slip style transaxle, I was able to do a weldless locker in it, which happened to work out great. Never had to go back into it, never have any play with it, never had to think about it. Works out great. So those are some of the big key points that you guys want to be looking for. Like I said, look for the one inch transaxle. Look for a five bolt uh, pattern in the rear. Look for 12 inch rear rim, nice big engine. Look at the mower itself, see if you can see a good steering system. Some of the steering systems are just really um, light duty and just don't work. Or look at how maybe it can be modified to work in a better scenario. Like the mowers that we built. On some of the other mowers like Scrappy and Magnum, we put golf cart or go-kart style uh, rack and pinions in and those guys will never look back that is some of the best steering mods we've done and it works super super good so check out some of the build series like scrappy and the magnum build series to see how we upgraded those steering systems now another thing i have on here is onboard air because you never know we like to just go in the middle of nowhere you get a flat tire boom we can air up or out of the bush we also carry a ton of tools belts pulleys lots of extra things uh, on Musty, I've built the whole skid plate underneath to cover everything so that if I drop down a rock or I'm plowing through the snow or we're just going through a field with tall grass, nothing's going to get gummed up under there or catching the pulleys or stop the belts or stick going in there. And I did that all because I remember wheeling with Tony one day and a little branch got up there, hit the belt in a weird way. The belt exploded. It was so loud of a bang. and we just I thought I blew up the... I didn't even know what was going on. And it was just the belt just simultaneously exploding so put the skid plate on there never look back like I say some of the best mods you could do skid plate ungovern the engine either just do a bypass or the delete itself put a foot throttle on it all right so I know that's a lot of me talking and yapping my japs and japping my laps and whatnot but that's a lot of info that you guys might need to know and some info that a lot of you definitely need to know <laughs> but anyways, there is going to be a lot more detail the video, a lot better set up and whatnot, just a, not just this quick thrown together video, but there's going to be a nice detail oriented video giving you guys everything you need to know on how to make an off-road mower, where to start, what to look. Like I said, it all starts with just getting a mower, seeing what you have, and then looking for the parts that you need. Getting a better transaxle, getting a better front axle, getting a better steering system, getting a better steering column adding in braces to make that stuff better, um, adding belt tensioners, adding pulley stops, adding just a bunch of these things all, all add up to making a good mower. And again, all of these tips and tricks are on the YouTube channel in all the videos down below and throughout the whole page. 
it's all on Instagram. A few things are on TikTok and the Facebook. But again, if you want to know how to build a mower, go down to the videos below because it's going to show you there. I spent a lot of time fabricating on this mower and a lot of the other mowers and just testing things and trying things out and failing and then rebuilding better. With everything I'm saying here, I just want to say appreciate everyone that was following along the channel for the last couple years and I'm super excited to roll out into 2023 with the new mower stuff and a lot of cool videos and again giving you guys the tips and tricks that you need to know. So again if you're looking into getting yourself into an off-road mower just remember it's going to be a lot of work, a lot of long nights and a lot of fun and again it is some of the most fun I've ever had. I never looked back once I got into the mowering game and I love it.